on my own property because I'm not going to rely on you guys for calculator. I got my own. So uh, wh where did we leave off? Was it this one with the hill? Mm -hmm. We did the next one? No, we didn't. We, we haven't done this one? Okay. So a 30-foot uh, ladder, which they've already drawn a picture for you. Uh, I advise you, if it's not labeled, to start labeling these yourself. So I'm going to 30, is going to go here. At an angle of 50 degrees with the ground. So that angle is with the ladder and the ground, which we put it here. As somebody mentioned earlier, is that then a, uh, an angle of uh, elevation or an angle of depression? Yeah, it's elevation. Yeah, it's, it's made with... Uh, that normally, angle elevation and, and depression are used with problems where there's line of sight involved. This is not line of sight, it's a ladder. But for all intents and purposes, it's the same thing because it's an angle that's being made with the ground. So that's 50 degrees. Uh, how far up the wall will the ladder reach? And then how far away from the base of the wall is the ladder? Oh, because there's actually two questions here. So you need to fix that on the paper, too. There's, we only asked for one of them. There's two question marks. They want to know how high, um, I'll call that H, and then how far away from the base, uh, let's call that B. So you can call it whatever you want. Let's find the height first. Which uh, which side of the, of the right triangle is the height? That's the opposite leg, yeah, that where it's uh, how, how high it'll reach. And then the ladder is acting as which... Uh, Hypotenuse. What's what's the trig ratio? So sine fifty h over thirty. When we want the sign on the top for operation, are we doing multiply this? So h is equal to thirty sine fifty. I'll use my own calculator. Thirty sine fifty. I only really scrutinize the rounding if the problem tells you where to round, and that's when I would be strict about it. But this one doesn't. I like with sides because they don't tell me to run the nearest hundred. So I'll say height is approximately uh, 22.98. Also, on the final review, if there's a unit, don't put the unit. Oh, I think I told you that already. Yeah, don't, don't put the unit. Okay, and then for the base of the ladder, uh, that's the adjacent leg, so it's going to be cosine, so I'll say cosine of 50 is equal to the base of the ladder over 30, when the side that you want is on the top. Multiply, multiply, so base is equal to 30 cosine 50. And I'm getting 19.23. Any questions there? Oh, here we go. Line of sight. Perfect. Here's little charisma down here. He's looking at the airplane. But, oh, no, never mind. It's not crazy. It's a habitat, too. Uh, and they're looking at an airplane, so is that an angle of elevation or depression? Hmm? Yeah, it's an angle of elevation, but conveniently, you see that if you take line of sight, if you take the horizontal, and you take the vertical, that makes the right triangle. So Alex is standing on the ground and looks up to see a plane flying in the sky. If it is flying at an altitude of two miles and the distance along the ground is five miles to a point directly below the plane, what is the angle of elevation that Alex has to look up? Well, let me just go ahead and put it out there. With these, you got to be careful. Because a lot of times these angle of elevation problems, since it refers with line of sight, where are your eyeballs? In your head, right? Where is your head not? Okay, so it's definitely not where the plane is, but where else is it not? Is, you see where I'm getting at? It's not on the ground. Yeah, and, and, and this is measuring the distance to the ground.
ground. So a lot of times what these problems are going to do is when you find this height here, it's going to be the height to your eyeballs, not to the ground. And then depending on the problem, you're either going to have to like add or subtract the, the distance from your eyeballs to the ground, depending on what information was given. Now, this information here does not tell me anything about how, about how tall Alex is or you know, how, how, how far it is from his eyeballs to the ground. So um, we're going to just go based on what they're giving us. We're going to assume that when they say um, that it's flying at an altitude of two miles, yeah, well, we're going to just assume that that, that that two miles here, that's an altitude. That's just the distance to his eyeballs. We're going to ignore the four feet or so that he's off the ground. And, and I guess, I mean, relatively speaking, when you're two miles away, you know, four feet, five feet or so doesn't make that big of a difference. And the distance along the ground is five miles. And they want to know the keywords are angle of elevation. What sides are we being given? <clears throat> the uh, adjacent end and the opposite. What's the trig ratio that relates that? Tangent, but if you want to find angles, what type of function <coughs> are we using? Inverse, good. Okay, I'll, okay, I'll call it A for angle. Is equal to inverse tangent. So it's got to be now total uh, opposite over adjacent. If you're good with fractions and you don't need a calculator that's fancy that converts decimals to fractions, 2 over 5 is the same as 0.4. So you can just do inverse tangent of 0.4. Uh, we know that we're measuring in miles. No, I'm sorry, that we're angles. I'm sorry, it's in degrees. degrees. So this should be, uh, do they tell us what around? They don't. All right, so then with, uh, with degrees, I like to go to the nearest degree. So this is about 22 degrees. Anybody disagree with that? You still haven't figured out with that, with that calculator? Like almost, almost every calculator, you have to either hit second or shift. It's right on top of the actual button. The same way you hit like shift on a keyboard and it goes to the top. I think did we come with an instruction manual? Oh, we did. Oh, man. I, I used to like read those for fun when I was a kid, when I had a graphing calculator. I always like to know what the calculator would do. Yeah. Yeah, I, I used to play with it with my, with my, uh, with my pet uh, Tyrannosaurus, my pet T-Rex. We would play with, uh, with a graphing calculator. Kept the bad people away. Uh, Michael, whose eyes, oh, okay, well, here we go, whose eyes are five feet off the ground. So we know that that distance right there is five feet. It's standing 30 feet away from the base of a build. Okay. So this is going to be then 30 feet. At an angle of elevation, angles of elevation are with the ground. So this is going to be a 50 degrees. Uh, to a point on the edge of the building's roof. To the nearest foot, how tall is the building? So we want to know the height of the building. But this is what I was getting at. Once we find this opposite side, or opposite leg, what are we going to have to do at the end? No, definitely not subtract. Yeah, we're going to add five. Now, if you want to be really fancy, uh, let, let me just try something, and then if you uh, if you can't get it, then I'll just do it piece by piece. So, we have decided to define H as the height of the building, correct? That's, that's what I picked to call it, is H. But 
right here, what I've drawn for you in red, that's not the entire height of the building. How can I define that piece that I'm going to find? If the height of the building is H, what could you call this little piece that I'm going to find as part of the triangle? Very good. That's exactly right. It's the entire height of the building minus the five feet that your eyeballs are off the ground. So, uh, or Michael's eyeballs are off the ground. So, when you do, like, if you want to knock this off in one shot and one equation and not have to go back later on, uh, let's see, we're doing um, opposite with adjacent. So, that's going to be tangent. So, I would say tangent of um, 50 is equal to, and when I do my opposite, I'll put that h minus 5 on top. If you can't get it and then you just want to only put eights, that's fine, but then you got to remember at the end to add five. And you can be like, wait, but Mr. Romero, I don't get it. What do you mean add five? Um, well, watch. If, if I were to solve now for the variable, I, I, we know that we slide this to the front to multiply, but it wouldn't be h that equals. It would be h minus five that equals 30, 10, 50. So to get h by itself, what do I have to do at the end? In order to get h by itself, what do I still have to do? No, not subtract by them. Right? So h is equal to 30, 10, 50, five. Is it exactly what you need? Just do it in two pieces. If you're going to put that all into your calculator at once, make sure, because a lot of, most calculators, when you um, hit a trig button, it opens up a parenthesis for you. So, you have to close it. If you're going to type it in all at once like this, you have to close that parentheses that gets opened up when you hit 10 and then hit plus 5. If you're doing this properly, I'm getting about 40.75 in one inch to the nearest foot. So I'm getting about 41 feet. About how many stories tall is that, would you say? Roughly about 10 feet is a story. Yeah, it's roughly four stories. Four stories. What? Four stories. Did I confuse anybody? Charisma, you still hanging in there? Okay. A little boy is standing out on a cliff. That's a dangerous word problem here. Um, and sees a boat that is 200 feet away from the base of the cliff. It is 315 feet away from him. What is the angle of depression? All right, so remember that the angle of depression is the angle from line of sight back to the horizon, which would be there. And due to alternate interior angles, Angle of depression is the same thing as angle of elevation. Both of those are the same. We'll see which one we need to use here. They tell us that um, the boat is 200 feet away from the base of the cliff. This is 200. And it is 315 feet away from him. I don't like how that's more. Um, yeah, it's, uh, that's going to have to be the hypotenuse. Because if not, they would say he's 315 feet off the ground. So I don't know how he's measuring that, but he somehow knows that this is three. Patty, my, my unit checker, all my units are good. We're all in feet. Okay. So we're, if we're looking for an angle, what angle, um, what, uh, what, tr what trick function can we use? It's going to be inverse, but it's not going to be tangent. Closer to good, yeah. Because it's uh, adjacent with that problem. So let's um, just call this A for angle again. Uh, is equal to inverse cosine. Anytime you want an angle, you have to hit the little inverse. Thing. So you have to understand that we're looking for. 
the reason why it's cosine is because if I turn my right triangle here, like they're they're, give, uh, they're asking for the angle of depression, but angle of depression is the same as angle of elevation. It was just easier for me to draw my right triangle with the ground as opposed to, so it doesn't really matter. And then based on this angle that we're looking for, if we are indeed looking for angle of elevation, it's adjacent with hypotenuse. Right? And it's adjacent over hypotenuse, so it's 200. Uh, they don't tell us where to round. Normally with angles, I like to go to the nearest degree. So I'm getting around 60 degrees. Patty agrees? Cool. Oh, what is it? Always cool. But well, these are like physics formulas. Nobody wrote any questions. Any questions? A princess on the top of a 167 foot tower is looking down at a 37 degree angle. That's an uh, angle of depression, which is here. It also makes this an angle here. How long is the rope? Rinse it on top of a tower at a 37 degree angle of depression and a package attached to a rope. Down at a package and attached to a rope on the ground. How long is the rope? The way I'm reading that is that she's looking, but it's not that there's a rope. Rinse it at the top of a tower and looking down at her head. At a package attached to a rope on the ground. Like that doesn't necessarily mean that this is the rope. Yeah, it has to be the bottom, right? That is the rope. There's a rope. She's looking. Yeah, she's looking down. She's not looking down the rope. I mean, a little vague, but I, I would take it that the rope is along the ground. Mm -hmm. That's why you have all that extra space for that if you don't understand that you can just write it on your own. You have all that space on the side. So, like, you're saying that, that the luxury of having the notes printed for you is not luxurious enough? It's not. How many teachers print out all the notes for you? I've never had one. You only have one teacher? I, I know, but not math. I'm just saying overall, how many different classes do you have the notes printed out for you? Two? All of them? Oh, I want to be your teacher. Weight training, does it? Yeah. All right, let, let, let's just take it to be the ground. Um, this is a little bit vague, but I'll take it to be that they're looking for the ground. So, um, so we're looking for a side. So what? What? Um, we're not going to use an inverse here. Based on that 37 degree angle, which um, which trig function should we use? If the height of the building is the opposite, and then along the bottom is the uh, adjacent height. Tan. tan. So tan of 37 is equal to the opposite, which is 167 over. Assuming that we wrote it, that we read it correctly, but I, I don't even have like a key to look at or anything, so to try to see what they meant by it. Um, when the when what you're looking for is on the bottom, what should we be doing? Dividing. So the way we divide is to flip off these two. Keep the 167 on top. 
Seven divided by ten thirty seven. Double the round. Not two twenty one point six two. I'm getting and we're in two. Longer than the building is tall. Longer than the building is tall. From an airplane at an altitude of 1,200 meters, the angle of depression to a building on the ground measures 28 degrees. Find the distance from the plane to the bare feet. So the angle of depression is 28. The airplane is flying at an altitude of 1,200 meters, and we want the distance from the plane to the base of the building. So they want the hypotenuse. Let's call this B for distance. Based on that 28 degree angle and the 1,200 is opposite, the distance is the hypotenuse. We're going to use sine, and we're looking for a side. So sine of 28 is the 1,200 divided by the distance. We want the one on the bottom. Divide. So distance is equal to 1,200 divided by sine 28. Charisma, is it making more sense? Is it making dollars? This one's really close to like the whole number, so I'm just gonna do this one to the whole to the nearest whole number. By the way, I get all the days in 2000. 2556. And we're in meters. Remember, this would be part of the final review. Just put the 2556. Um, you finally get it? Yeah, it's amazing when you're here, right? How it just starts to make sense. Right, Shaley? As opposed to not being here, like when you're here and not sleeping and stuff. Like that. A sonar operator on a battleship detects a submarine at a distance of 500 meters horizontally. So this is 500 up here. At an angle of depression of 37. How deep is the sub? So we want the depth. Why don't you guys do that one? I'll do it myself and then you, you do it, raise your hand and tell me what you get. Josh, you got it? No. I, I don't really care. It, it, like, if it doesn't tell you word around, just you can give me the answer however you want. Uh, nearest meter, nearest hundred, whatever. I can do it anyhow. Scotty, you got it? What'd you get, Scott? Yeah, seven, eight, if you're going to go there. Mm -hmm. What? Okay, so uh, based on that 37 degree angle, the, the distance or the depth, is the opposite and the 500 is the adjacent. So that's tangent. So tan 37 is equal to the depth over 500. 
500. I'm looking for the side on top. So it's 500. Um, depth is equal to 500. And 37. And you put that as a wise calculator. Depending on where you want to round, you would get a 376.78. Remember that this test on Friday, it's not going to be all trig. You have to go back and study special right triangles and uh, Pythagorean, but it, it's being offered as quiz replacement for both of the last two quizzes. If you do better on this test Friday than either of the quizzes, it replaces the grade book. More sonar. Did you see your back one, Jake? That's still a different one. This is the exact same. Huh? Oh, well, I guess you're giving you a different distance this time, right? Yeah, I'm trying to do it. You got to do it. A sonar operator detects, well, how deep. So, Kenny, how much do you bench? 315? Mm -hmm. How much? 185? That's not bad. Do you do it 37 times or just one time? Once. You'll get there. Anybody got it already? Patty, what'd you get? Yeah, depending on where you want to run, but yeah, it's around 229. So uh, the, the distance that they're describing here, that they're showing us on the picture, is the hypotenuse. And we're looking for the depth again, which is the opposite. So it's going to be sine. Sine of 35 is equal to opposite, which is the depth over 400. And D is equal to 400 times 35. Round. That's about 229. What's different about this one? Yeah, there's no diagram, so you're going to have to draw yourself a tree. Cast the shadow that is 21 meters long. Thanks. Um, and the angle of elevation of the sun. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah, the sun's, yeah, the sun's above it, but whatever. So here are these golden rays of sunshine. It. And but and the thing is, we know that the angle of depression is equal to the angle of elevation, so we'll just put this 51 here. And they want to know what is the height of the tree. So uh, which side are we looking for? Oh, no, we're looking for the opposite. Which one are they giving us? Adjacent. So tan 51 is equal to opposite, which is the height of the tree, over 21. So height is equal to 21 to 10, 51. Make sure your calculator is in degrees, because it would be like silly to take an entire quiz or something with your calculator being set to the wrong unit. That would just completely sabotage everything. It's really close to 26. So height is around 26 meters.
A helicopter is hovering over a landing pad. Oh man, it's moving. Is hovering over a landing pad a hundred meters from where you are standing. So that means that um that's a hundred meters. The helicopter's angle of elevation with the ground is twelve degrees. What is the altitude of the helicopter? What are we looking for? Huh? Yeah, the opposite, and they're giving us the adjacent to that can. I'll be selling my artwork for charity um, at the end of class, auctioning it off. So altitude is equal to 100, and Do any of you guys like on, on your spare time? If I don't like do, how we started these notes last time, so you pat them all weekend, just try to do the whole thing like on your own. Some of you just because I've noticed some of my better students that like a habit like that. When I went there and saw the examples, they try to finish it on their own. Right, stay tripping. 100, and we're in meters, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm getting about 21.26 meters off the ground. You know about helicopters? No. C and yes. Caretaker? Care tech? What's care tech? Oh, you're speaking Latin. Here, why don't you guys try doing this one? See if you can draw your own picture. Flying a kite. Yeah, it's always nice when they do things for you. Raise your hand when you got it. The picture? Will you want me to like raise your picture? <laughs> Yeah, I'm not a very good artist either. Zachariah, you got it? Are you racing Muhammad? Raise your hand when you got it. It's an angle of elevation, so it's an angle from the line of sight, or in this case, the, the line of sight is actually acting as a string um, to the ground. Now, again, it, you have to kind of suspend disbelief because I, I, I doubt you'd be flying a kite like holding the string down at your feet, like on the ground. It'd probably be a little bit up, but it, it gives us no information as to how high off the ground we're holding the string. So. We're just gonna have to go with it. What? I have it down. Oh, a nail. 
Or you can just tie it to your toe. You can do that too. <laughs> Any, uh, nobody, no, not one person has an answer for this? Well, what would you get, Scotty? Yeah, I got about the same thing. So, here I am, holding my little string. And again, even though we're holding the kite in our hand, we'll just assume that our hand is on the ground because there's nothing else given to us. And our angle of elevation is 40, and this, we're letting out 80 meters of string. So that has to be the hypotenuse, and we want the height. How high is it? So it's going to be sine. So sine of uh, 80 is equal to the height over 80. So the height is 80 times 40, which is approximately 51.42. Did it tell us where to round? Right, I'm pretty sure when I made this uh this lecture, I just it's gonna be a lot of the same type of songs repeated, but just to try to change things up, let's actually skip to the end. Let's see if these are any different. You guys try to do that one. I forgot to take attendance. Your salt. Your salt and the last problem. Yeah, we're gonna work backwards. What angle does the tower make of the ground? So we're actually looking for the angle of elevation here. And I think that could be 182. Because it seems like we would drop straight down 182 and fell. It fell down at 14 feet, so we're at room at an angle here. So it's going to be inverse angle. Uh, we'll say angle is equal to inverse tangent of 182 over 14. So, we're getting, um, 85.6 degrees. It's an angle of elevation because it says it's with the ground. Um, what angle does the tower make it with the ground? So here's the tower, here's the ground, and that's angle of elevation. The hypotenuse is the tower because the 90 degree angle here. And I mean, if you're going to think of it in context, obviously the leaning tower of pizza leans, but um, pizza, it's pronounced pizza. Uh, most buildings that are erect, what's their angle with the ground? Yeah, like what angle does it make with the ground? 
meaning what angle would that be? 90 degrees. 90 degrees, yeah, 90 degrees. And this one means it can't affect the meat too much. So 85.6 sounds reasonable. If I was getting like a 30 degree angle, that'd be kind of weird. So, but Mickey was asking, well, like, how do you know which which angle to use? And I mean, I think of it this way. If, uh, like, let's say I would have used the wrong angle, I would have probably gotten the complement of that, which would have been 4.4 degrees. That'd be like the horizontal tower of pizza. Let me do one more. Let's do the second to last one. An escalator from the second floor to the ground floor. Of a department store is 110 feet long and falls 32 feet vertically. What angle does the escalator make with the second floor? Okay, so here are we looking for angle of elevation, angle of depression? No, it's actually depression because it's, it's what angle is it making with the second floor? But what do we know about angle of elevation, angle of depression? They're not opposite, they are. Inverse. They're congruent. So whatever this angle is, is the same as that angle. <coughs> well, make sure that's not a right triangle. It's because my heart's here. Okay. So that's opposite and um, hypopotamus. So the angle is equal to um, inverse sine of 32 over 110. Getting around 17 degrees is the angle made with the second floor. If this were to be now, I say, well, hey, now use this information and tell me what would be the, um, actually, no, never mind. It's going to be the same. Okay, fine. If I, if I were to say what uh, what angle do the, does the um, escalator make with that vertical distance? No, 17 would be down here. Yeah, it'd be the complement. Should be what, 73? Yeah, so uh, tomorrow we'll have a practice day. I'll have the laptops here. Please be finished with this assignment for this week. It's only one. We knock it out already tonight, so tomorrow we can work on the final review. <laughs> Kenny, I would expect some last one.